Hi guys! Hi there! Thank you for joining. Please sit comfortably and get ready to answer some questions. That's right, today you will be answering some questions for us, not us. If you are moving to Canada, congratulations! And I wish you best of luck in your future journey ahead. But now, you must have a big decision in front of you. What city should you choose to live in Canada? Canada has six cities with population about 1 million people or more and around 20 cities with population between 100,000 people and 900,000 people. And that's a lot of cities to choose from. So in this video, we're going to talk about some of the main aspects for you to consider when you're choosing which city to move to in Canada. So without further ado, let's get started. Overall, we've come up with seven major aspects for you to consider before choosing which city to move to in Canada. But before we dive into this, please keep in mind that whatever city that you choose to move to, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll stay there for the rest of your life. In fact, the chance is really high that you won't even stay for more than a year in the first city that you land into when you arrive to Canada. That's right! For example, when I just moved to Canada, my first 10 months I spent in a small city before moving elsewhere, just because I found a job there. And eventually, everything depends on how your life goes, what you're planning to do, and just your preferences. Okay, and now it's time for you to answer some of our questions, just like we warned you in the beginning of this video. And my first question to you would be a very important one, even if it doesn't seem so. What's your favorite type of climate and what weather do you prefer? The climate is a very important aspect to pay attention to, because if you don't like the climate, it means you would feel uncomfortable most of the time and miserable or even depressed. For example, some people can't stand scorching sun and hot temperatures, because they feel lazy all the time, they sweat, and it might be even very tough for their health. And some people have never seen snow, and they can't even imagine what it feels like at minus 35 degrees Celsius. They don't know what to wear in that temperature, how to keep warm, and this may make them get sick very frequently. Some people might even be allergic to cold, so they would spend most of their time during winter indoors, and they wouldn't be able to enjoy the life to the fullest. And some people feel awful during rapid temperature fluctuations. When it's plus 30 during the day and then plus 5 during the night, it would give them migraines and it would make it almost impossible to live in such a climate for a long period of time. And some people can't stand the gray skies and don't like the rain. Did you know that Vancouver has been named one of the unhappiest cities in Canada? And the weather has a lot to do with it. The gray skies make some people feel lonely, sad and depressed. So once you have an answer for what type of weather is ideal for you, you can go ahead and compare the climate in different cities in Canada on Wikipedia and choose the one you prefer the most. And if you're interested in some particular cities, please leave a comment below and we would try to make a video about them. The second question we should ask you guys about is what's your family situation? If you're moving to Canada alone and have no strings attached, it might be psychologically difficult because you're all alone. But on the flip side, you're able to make decisions a lot faster because you don't have to negotiate or seek consensus. However, if you have family and you have kids, whatever the decision you make, you want to make it collectively and you want to make sure that your spouse, your kids and maybe your parents are fully comfortable with it. If you're a young family, you might consider smaller cities to raise your children in a quiet, affordable and safe place. Some people choose a place to live depending on educational institutions they would like their kids to go to – kindergartens, schools, colleges and universities. It's also important to do research on job opportunities for both spouses in any given area before you decide to move. You want to make sure your profession is in demand and there is plenty of jobs available that you like. And that's a lot to consider. That's right. And overall, our practical advice here would be is if you have a family, make sure to communicate your goals and wishes with each other and maybe even build a list so that you can compare all the options. I really like your idea. Make a list of what's important to you and all members in your family and then prioritize it from the most important to the least important. It is very important to work all the decisions out together as a family. Immigration is a very difficult experience in our lives and oftentimes it either makes families stronger or breaks them far apart. Don't rush making decisions. 
And keep in mind that the grass is always greener on the other side, and it's nearly impossible to find a place that you will absolutely be happy with on all accounts. And once again, don't stress, because you don't have to think too far ahead. Everything might change just after your first year in Canada, because you would have more information and understanding of the life in Canada. And you might change your mind and move to another city. And that would be perfectly fine. Alright, so the next question is probably the most important question on our list. What is your occupation? For instance, if you're in IT, you're probably better off somewhere in the Ottawa Waterloo region, just because it's considered the Silicon Valley of Canada. On the flip side, if you're something like a marine biologist, for instance, you're likely better off somewhere in the Atlantic provinces or provinces that are close to the ocean shore, because that's where you'll likely find more job opportunities. And if you're in mining, gas and oil, you probably want to be close to the natural resources in Canada, where they extract or process these resources. And it could be something like Alberta, Ontario, Quebec or Newfoundland. Finding your first job in Canada is the most important task for a newcomer. You need to be able to support yourself and your family financially because Canada is an expensive country to live in. You have to start earning Canadian salary as soon as possible to be able to feel safe and secure and enjoy your life in Canada. Having a job is also important for your assimilation in the new culture and learning the language. Finding a job in your field that fits your experience gives you peace of mind and satisfaction because you get to do what you're best at while learning new things about your profession in the new country. You also start building relationships and build your network, gaining Canadian experience and growing further. And while we say that, we're also being mindful that not every single one of you will be able to land a job according to your profession. And some may have to resort to the survival job for a little while, while you're going back to school or waiting to get your license. Do not despair. It's temporary, and even the minimum wage job in Canada can provide you the basics of that financial security you need when you're early on in your Canadian journey. And my personal advice would be for you, keep your goals in mind, be patient and work hard towards them. Determination pays off. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about survival jobs and how much they pay, we made a video on that topic a couple of months ago. We'll leave the link to that below, so check it out. To sum up this point, my main advice for you today would be go wherever you can find your first job. Unless you can work remotely, of course. And be flexible. Even if you land in the city of your dreams and you're offered a job elsewhere, don't be afraid to move. Because you've just moved to a new country, so moving between cities shouldn't be such a big problem. Remember, everything is temporary, so you should treat it as a wonderful experience. You can grow further and even see different places in Canada. And who knows, you might actually like it there and stay for longer. You never know. And as you try to answer the question of which city is best for you, I would recommend you visit indeed.ca or LinkedIn to see what jobs are available in which cities in your field. The cities that have more results are the cities you want to shortlist. This type of research will tell you what cities have more job opportunities for people with your occupation. And by the way, it's also a really nice way to see what requirements employers have for job seekers so that you can make sure you tailor your resume accordingly. And if you are in your resume building phase, we recommend you check out the video we made a couple of months ago on that topic. Link to that below. To sum everything up, doing the job search in different cities is a great first step as you plan which city to move to when you move to Canada. My fourth question would be in the same realm of questions as the previous two. What cost of living are you willing to handle? If you have a big family and you're a truck driver, do you think you can feel comfortable living in an expensive city like Vancouver? Or if you're a student and you're going to work part-time, how much would you be willing to pay for rent? Budgeting is key. To have a better understanding of cost of living in different cities, I recommend website numbeo.com. You can find information about the city you are interested in and calculate how much money you and your family would need for a week or a month or a whole year. Then you can find your potential salary information on websites like Glassdoor or Payscale. And some job postings on LinkedIn and Indeed have information about salary too. Salary differs mostly depending on your experience, set of skills, the company and the city. 
It is also important to get a good idea on what the survival jobs pay in that specific area as well, even though you don't plan on getting a survival job. But one thing we always advocate for is having a plan B. What if you cannot find the job or your expenses are suddenly higher than what you planned for? Do not rule out any of your options. To sum everything up, by combining the two things like salary and the cost of living, it will give you some good information about which city is more plausible for you to live in. Moving on, my next question to you would be how important is your ethnic community to you? Some people when moving to Canada are in such a rush to assimilate in a new society that they decide to separate themselves from their country's community, at least for a while at first. However, some prefer to raise their children close to their country's communities because they want to preserve their language, culture, customs and traditions. Actually, it doesn't have to be just the ethnic communities, it could be any sort of community. Our point here is, is that some cities have bigger and more diverse communities than others. Obviously, bigger cities will have much richer communities overall. So we would recommend you do some research to find which communities are important to you and whether they are available in the cities that you're considering. There are many Facebook groups dedicated to particular communities in particular cities. So don't be shy to reach out to people in those communities and ask them about their cities and how they like them. And our next question for you guys to answer is what are your hobbies and what do you like to do in your free time? We're asking you this because it's a nice indicator of the pace of life you enjoy and the things you like to do in your free time. Our life is split in thirds. Third of our day is for sleep. Third is for work. And then one third is for our free time. So it's really important to keep in mind what is it that you do in your free time. Do you prefer going to bars, clubs, theaters, different social events and concerts, or you'd much rather go fishing or hiking or bird watching? Maybe you like walking your dog in beautiful huge parks and you like to take your kids out for ice skating on the lake. Or maybe you're a boat guy and you like to take your boat out on the water and enjoy the fresh breeze on the empty lake. As I already mentioned, my first 10 months in Canada I spent in a small city and, to be honest, it wasn't easy. Because I'm the type of person who likes going to cinema with friends or play soccer or go to live concerts or go for a walk and explore interesting new places in the city. Unfortunately, in a small town many of those activities weren't easily accessible for me. So one day, when I was looking for more inspiration for things to do, I spoke to my co-worker and I asked him why did he like living in a small town. And he said a very simple thing that opened my eyes. He said that he enjoyed riding his boat, fishing and hunting. He liked the peaceful, beautiful nature. The small city I felt so bored in had a lot of that to offer to a colleague of mine who was really into outdoors. So see, if he were to live in a big city, he would probably be unhappy, living from weekend to weekend, looking for every opportunity to escape it, to go to the nature. That is why it's important to choose a place that suits your pace of life and your interests and how you spend your free time. Otherwise, you would be just adding stress to your life. And that's not why you're moving to Canada, right? Another question we'd like to ask you is not so obvious, though very simple. Which languages do you speak? And this one is pretty self-explanatory. Canada has two official languages, English and French. French is the first official language for 23% of Canadian population. Majority of Francophone population lives in Quebec, and this is where French is the primary official language. There's also the province of New Brunswick, which is also bilingual under the Canadian Constitution. Approximately one-third of its population is francophone. So, if you speak French and you would feel more comfortable living in a French-speaking society, then consider moving to those two provinces. If you only speak English, you will likely want to avoid Quebec, because many job postings there require you to be bilingual, so it would make it hard for you to assimilate in the society fully and grow in your career if you don't speak French fluently. So here we are. These are the seven aspects that we think are important when deciding which city to choose to live in Canada. So here are the things for you to consider. What climate are you most comfortable with? What's your family situation? What's your occupation? And what cost of living is reasonable for you? How important is community for you? What your hobbies are and what's your lifestyle like? And what languages do you speak? 
I hope this was thought-provoking for you and you're already making a list of your priorities and googling some of your questions for your research. I can only wish you best of luck! And if you liked this video, please don't forget to gently tap the like button below and subscribe to this channel for more useful content. If you have any friends who are planning to move to Canada, please don't forget to share this video with them. And as always, if you have any experiences to share or if you have any specific questions, don't forget to ask them in the comment sections below. Maybe us or our viewers can help you out. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care!